3D scanner. 3D scanner. 3D scanner. 3D scanning. 3D scanner. 3D scanner. It's time for some more 3D scanning. Maker Pro recently reached out to see if I wanted to review the Moose 3D scanner, so that's what we're doing today. Inside the box was the scanner itself, a lanyard, a turntable and power cable, an adjustable tripod, power brick, scanner cable, turntable head, a nice carry case, and a thumbscrew as well. It's a very versatile setup, coming in at 767 US dollars, so it's more in the mid range compared to the bundles I've had before. The scanner itself goes for 699 and I have seen occasional sales bring this number down. This, however, makes it double the cost of my previous two scanners, so I'll judge it accordingly. So they've actually included a gallium nitride charger. It's the same size, but this has half the power at 30 watts. So this is really cool. To start, I've gathered three separate items for a little gauntlet. First, a plant for its organic shapes and color tones. A tank cover as an improvement test over my previous 3D scanner, and a motorcycle fairing as a large scan and surface test. To make things easy to scan, there's an item I highly recommend that we'll check out later. I've got everything wired up correctly, so let's get started. The plant requires a higher brightness scan setting, which is very easily adjustable in JM Studio, 3D Maker Pro's own software. I've used it before, and it's pretty simple to use, while still offering the essential tools to pre- and post-process your scans. We'll look into that more once we need to process a scan. The main thing to take away is to keep your scan brightness and sensitivity as low as possible for the best results. But the scans will still work well, of course, if you need to increase them. That's just what they're there for. I don't actually think I need the tripod. It's a little bit more comfortable without it. And I think the tripod is a little bit overpriced in my opinion. But for the table scan, it's sure it's useful, but you can do most of the jobs required with just the handheld mode. I've also noticed that with the screen recording and the actual scanning going, it's draining even for an M1 MacBook. You really need a beefy computer to do this. That's a lot better. Not perfect, but manual data aligning is actually not as hard as I thought and it works pretty well. It doesn't help that this model was actually a lot harder to scan than I expected. For a pure white area and some black soil, and the leaves weren't particularly easy to scan either, it did a pretty good job. I feel like with a bit more time I could definitely improve this and get a perfect scan. But let's move on to the next part, which I'm sure will be a lot easier. About two years ago, I scanned this part with my first 3D scanner, the CR Scan Lizard, so today we'll be comparing it to the Moose. Here is a quick look at the final result. The back overhang thing didn't turn out perfect, but still much better than my first ever scan. Because I painted this part with grey primer, it is the perfect surface to 3D scan, so you can guarantee an excellent result like this. As you can see by the scan preview, we're already getting a lot of data. The processed scan looks great, and compared to the CR Scan Lizards one, it's an improvement which was expected and nice. The underside details are extremely clear, and the back alignment part had no errors. It's very pleasing. Next up, we'll use the Hinted Dry Shampoo as scanning spray. It costs a tenth of the price and performs well for it. It creates a matte surface on the part to make the scanning of shiny or translucent surfaces possible. Oh, I think we've run out. There are other methods too, but this one was the easiest for me. We're getting there. Um, I'm going to transfer the data over to my main computer since I don't want this thing to take ages to process. Uh, we're getting there. Slowly. I spent a good 20 minutes trying to align and sort everything, but it just wasn't working, even with manual alignment. I think this part was just a bit too big to be easily done without more modifications for tracking. Next, I'll try 3D scanning my keyboard as a texture and overall performance test. The first result was decent, but any after that failed due to the tracking becoming lost. I tried scanning again on my desktop, and it went much better. That's actually really good. Maybe not perfect for a render or such, but as a, for example, video game prop or for basic test of the actual texture mapping, that's pretty good. Let's move on to some other scans. This is a motor mount for my Ender 5 3D printer. It was printed in grey PLA, but I sprayed some grey primer on it to remove any chance of there being a shine. 
That's actually a pretty good scan. So if I wanted to print this out, I could, and it would be usable. For example, the bottom here, I would just sand that so that it's back to how it was, and I could just re-drill the, uh, the holes. So yeah, not bad. It also depends if you hit the repair gaps uh, function. That can also sometimes affect the geometries, so that's something to consider. Third to last is a Dewalt battery, a good combination of detail and texture. It actually surprised me. Wow, that's, that's a lot better than I expected. It's got the details on the side, even the front part, which is slightly translucent. That is perfect. I also want to mention that seeing a scan come together is really satisfying. It's quite an enjoyable process, even though it can be quite tedious. Okay, I restarted the scan and it took two minutes and it's absolutely flawless. I mean, this is absolutely incredible. I'm very pleased. Second to last is an earbuds case, which uses really dark plastic, and I think the scanner handled it really well. You can also see where the shine was captured for the texture. Finally, we have the extruder and duct mount for my Ender 3 as another detail test, but there might be one more bonus after this. Much better. Once again, that's a very impressive scan. There's some minor detail losses, like the holes there. I did disable repair gaps, but it's done a really good job. It's a usable model if I was to 3D print it. The ducts need a bit of cleanup, but that's to be expected since the scanner doesn't really know what's inside of them. But yeah, that's pretty good. I couldn't resist attempting to scan my camera. It has quite a few shiny metal surfaces and also dark plastic ones, so I didn't have super high hopes, but I was impressed. Already I'm absolutely blown away. I was just doing this as a little test, but I mean, this is, Wow. James Studio crashed twice while doing this project, and since there's no autosave, I lost everything. So 3D Maker Pro, an autosave feature would be amazing. I am absolutely blown away. I've done custom filmmaking gear videos in the past using 3D printing, and now that I have an actual model of the camera, that wouldn't cost me 150 US dollars. For essentially free, but of course there's the cost of the scanner. I'm just, I'm at a bit of a loss for words, to be honest. This is amazing. So before we wrap up with amazing, let's do a quick point evaluation of the Moose 3D scanner. I'll rank it out of 10 in 10 separate categories. Quality, 8. I think it's near the best it can be for its price and size. The only change would be using metal everywhere instead of only the bottom and top. It's excellent overall though, and here's a sound test. Efficiency of use, 7. It does as advertised and has the standard flaws that any 3D scanner would have, but I found that it struggled with tracking in one or two scenarios. Aside from that, the overall workflow is refined and more time consuming over challenging. I'd say it's efficient and much faster than 3D modeling in the right scenario. Durability, 8. It'll last you for all the jobs you need to get done, and in a professional serious environment, it'll pay itself off many times before it gets a chance to break. I'm not going to drop test it, but it's a solid device which will last. Ease of use, 8. The software works well and the instructions are great, plus no proprietary connector like the CR Scan Lizard and instead a USB-C port, which is very nice. It's not game changing, but that's irrelevant. Value, 7.5. It's better than my previous scanner, but at around double the price. The texture and scan resolution have both been excellent, so if that's in your requirements, I can say it's worth it. I can't say the tripod is worth the $40 cost, but the turntable at 30 definitely is. Even more as a filmmaker. That's how I got these cool shots. Features, 9. All necessary scanning features in a well-rounded package. Color scanning is nice, turntable and handheld mode are versatile options, and the portability of it all is even more impressive. Design 8.5. It's a perfect weight, good in the hand, and looks refined but still minimalist. Performance 7.5. If the CR Scan Lizard was a 6, this would be a 7.5. It still needs a powerful PC to use efficiently, but scans really well in the right scenario. Reliability 9.5. It's durable and I had no disconnections on Windows, but a couple on Mac OS most likely due to using an adapter. Customer support is 9. I had a problem which was caused by using a beta version of macOS, so I emailed them and had everything sorted and confirmed within 24 hours. I was very pleased. Overall, the Moose 3D Scanner scores 82 out of 100. That concludes this review, so thank you so much for watching, and make sure to check out PCBWay's 10th anniversary promotion. See ya!